Now, you just released the, uh, you know, your new project in November last month. Um, and that shit performed really well. Like, yeah. I remember uh, we posted it on Say Cheese. Everybody was fire emojied up. And that shit reached, like, what? Top 11. 10 on Apple Music? 11. 11. With like no 11 promotion. On Apple Music. No promotion. No marketing budget. No strategy. Nothing. We just dropped it. How did you feel about that? Because I, I know you didn't know that shit was coming like that. Fuck no. I honestly... I mean, I, honestly, I knew it was going to do something because of the simple fact. Before the city on my back city that I dropped under uh, Empire, because that's when I signed my little distribution deal with Empire. So I kind of knew that one was going to go. But the CD directly before that, <clears throat> that I dropped by myself, was Two-Face. And I didn't even fucking post it. Never posted it till the day it was out. I said, go get it. And that motherfucker got up to like, 27 on the charts. And that, like, that blew my mind. Like, so when I dropped this last one, I, I kind of knew it was going to go high because just because my fan base didn't grew more. But I never thought it would be 11. Like, I was thinking more so in the 20s again. But, yeah. And it was like on all genres, it hit like 17. And on just hip hop, it was 11. Like, Black Youngster dropped the same day as me. And my shit was over his. The whole time. And it fucked me up because we didn't promote it. We didn't have no marketing strategy. We didn't put a dollar behind it. It was just some quick shit. And it was only eight songs on there by myself. No features. Yeah. I was about to say that I love how it's short and sweet straight through. And you know, when it's short and sweet, that's how you build them streams up. Mm -hmm. When it's super long, it kind of creates an anxiety. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because they, they not going to listen to every song. Mm-hmm. Like when the song is when the when the tape is short, it's easier to pick out your favorite record. Exactly. But then another another thing, another cheat code is when you drop a CD, the more songs it got is more is 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 more capable to chart higher because it's more songs. That's just how it go. And then, like say you got four videos that you done already dropped off the CD before you dropped the CD, and they all got millions of views on YouTube. You put them on a CD and make you chart higher because they ain't counting the streams already when you drop. So it's like the CD already got 5 million streams if you already did some numbers on YouTube and shit. So that'd be a strategy. Damn, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, that's why if you notice, everybody who drop a CD, they have at least two or three songs on there that they had already dropped videos to and that was big like because it helped the streams out. Right. Would you would you say that PZ changed your life? Hell yeah, hundred percent. And like a lot of people, a lot of people still to this day think PZ gave me some money. Like it was never about the money. Like, like when I got signed to Ghetto Boys, my knowledge was I thought he already had like Babyface Ray. I thought people was already under there, but. Once I signed, I was his first artist that he actually signed on paper, but he never looked at me as an artist. It was always more brother. And he told me, like when I dropped that Ghetto Boy intro song, which was one of the big songs that got me known, he had came to my house while I was on Tether. And I was still kind of fucked up. So when he said, I want to sign you, me just being from the hood, when I hear sign, like any, when you hear sign, you think money. So I'm like, hell yeah, woo woo. And we just set up and kicked it. And I asked him, I'm like, bro, I'm like, I need some money for real. He like, I give you some money, that ain't no thing. He like, but he like, I give you some money and that's just all the love I got for you. But he like, you don't need this money, bro. He like, I'd rather give you the game. And, and just, all he really told me was rap. He like, just go rap. He like, from what I know, bro, he like, I guarantee. Peasy told me out his own mouth. You might blow up bigger than me, bro. He always, and I wouldn't, he like, I, that's what I want. He like, I don't want to reap no benefits off of the nothing. I just want to use my platform to get you out there. Cause you, like, he liked in my music. Then once we linked, he liked me as a person. Like, he treated me as a brother. So it was more so just wanting to see me win. And if he wouldn't have did that, it probably wouldn't have happened this quick. You know what I'm saying? Cause I knew. 
like when I used to just play drop play songs and I just seen the reaction from people, I knew it can get serious, but at the time I'm like, don't nobody wanna hear this shit I'm talking about, like on that scale. So when Peasy told me he loved it, the music, that was somebody we looked up to. Team Eastside was big. I always liked the Peasy. Like before I met him all that, like he was always just real relatable. So that made me be like, just go harder, cause he like if you rap, I guarantee it's going to pay off. And that shit really changed my life, that talk we had. like He like, I don't want to give you no money because that's going to base the relationship and the shit off money. You know, I just want to give you my platform. And to this day, when I talk to him, he tell me the same thing. Like, you don't owe me nothing, bro. I still try to do what I can. Like, I'm going to buy him a chain and everything when he get out. Like, just off of... The, the love he gave to me, like, he ain't want no percentages or none of that shit, but we made it fair. I'm like, of course, boom, boom. but he like, I just want you to get that, get get some light off the platform. I try to shine on you because I like you as a as an artist and as a person. So he definitely changed my life. I love how you mention him so much, you know, in interviews and stuff like that, because I see artists get on. And they go on interviews and platforms and they say, I did it all by all myself. All by myself, yeah. yeah. Or, or, or they say, I was going to make it regardless. Yeah. And with you, it's like, yo, peasy, peasy. You always speak on his name and I fuck with artists like that. Yes, I got this shit on my neck twice. You know what I'm saying? I, like, it's bigger than that. If you listen to probably 98% of every song I didn't drop since then, I say, Boys, boys in T, free to ghetto. Every post I post on Instagram, I'm hashtagging boys, free to ghetto. Like, even though the time he had was short, I'm like, I'm gonna keep the name alive because it only makes sense. You feel me? Like, I can't, I'd never sit up here and lie and say I did it by myself. A lot of shit that I did do, I really didn't need help, but he helped me in the beginning and that went the, the whole way. Because you gotta think. Peasy went in, and I was still merging, so it wasn't really much else he can do while he was locked up. Like, so I just listened to what he said and put that work in, and it paid off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I see him rub off on you a lot. I see you you bring artists with you. You do a lot of uh, even with Mike. You and him do a lot of duos and shit like that. Like, is his is Peasy's entrepreneurship rubbing off on you, and you like doing that in Flint? Hell yeah, that's why I said it was the best thing about it because with the way I came up, it make me want to do that and it's like a revolving cycle. That's what he don't know or he probably do know, but that was the biggest part about it. Like, he not just helping me, he helping a lot of people because with me getting on like that, it made me be like, shit, well, if I, if I vouch for this nigga or co-sign him and he put the work in, he going to make it just how I did so yeah. I'm always open to share share the share the light, especially with my brothers. Like Mike is my brother. Before the music, me and Mike was brothers. Louis Ray is my blood brother. YNJ is Louis Louis Ray best friend, and he was in the circle. So yeah, I'm a big him up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I did songs with all the up and coming rappers from Flint for close to nothing. Like like I tell everybody to this day. Like I charge. I was charging 5000 a feature. If you from Flint and come to me, I got want to do a song. Well, first thing I probably say is, what you got? Or I'll be like, well, I'll make it fair. You can give me this. Or I'll go off what I think a nigga uh, comfortable with spending. Like I didn't, I didn't did a verse for 7500 then turned around and did one with a Flint artist for $800. Knowing mm, my that's work, real. you know what I'm saying? But it's like, it ain't even about the money. It's just make it make sense on both ends. Like, it, like, cause I do it for the for the love if I like it and all that. But you coming giving me anything, just showing how much effort you got in and how much you believe in yourself. You know what I'm saying? Cause the money is like obviously eight nine hundred dollars is ain't like I ain't that ain't nothing I can really you know what I'm saying like. That's, I know my real. worth, but it's like I'm trying to shed the light as much as I can. Did you ever sit back and be like, 
think this shit was like a dream. Like, damn, Peasy, like, all the artists that want to work with you and you want to fuck with me, like, why me? Like, why me? Like, yeah. was it ever like a dream? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, in the beginning, it was crazy. Like, I used to wake up every day and just ask myself, is this, is this shit real? You know what I'm saying? Like, how did, like, like to this day, it still kind of feel like a dream because it's like, like I, I ain't made it out the hood yet, but I'm I'm there. You know what I'm saying? And from where I'm coming from, it's a big thing. Like I'm able to take care of my family now, and it's just a beautiful feeling. You know what I'm saying? 